In this video, let us continue on the topics on the dynamics of electricity and this is now focused on the electric power. So let us understand what is power source, what is the power of internal and external dissipations. When we say electric power, this is the rate per unit of time in which electrical energy is transferred by an electric circuit. So remember that if we have a source wherein it has a potential from high, dip, uh, from high potential to the low potential which is A to B so that if we have the source voltage from A to B then this is ready to serve electricity to the circuit. So if we have the load let us say bulb with the resistance value of R then we connect this with a conducting material like conductor so if we close this circuit this is an open circuit if we close this one electrons will travel towards the high potential so the result is the current that flows from high towards the low so the current is the reverse direction of the electrons okay so this is actually shown in our previous video so we provide the circuits and now that today let us focus on how much current delivered on this circuit how much power uh, consumed on the load and how much power introduced by the source okay so take note that the definition of power is the rate of this is the rate per unit of time so if we have the take note that electron is travel towards the positive or the high potential then there must be energy so if you quantify the amount of energy of the charge per time it is power so when we open the circuit then electron is stop working okay so take note that the definition of current is the change in the charge per time interval this is the definition of the current because we want to know how much is the power so we will start on this equation that involves i so if we take the general product of this <clears throat> the result is the dq is equivalent to the uh, i times the infinitesimal time okay so this take note this is a charge and this is the current and we have the time now, if we multiply this both sides by the source, which is the potential from A to B, the result now becomes the potential difference from A to B times DQ is equivalent to the potential difference from A to B times I times DT. Okay? Now, remember that the product of the electric potential, because this is electric potential, difference so the, the product of the electric potential and the charge take note this is energy so this is a unit of joule okay why because this is potential because the definition of the definition of uh, work or the energy of charge is the what or the potential the Potential by definition is energy per charge. So if you take the general product of that, then we have the V times Q, wherein this one is the energy. So therefore, if this is energy, and this must be energy also. And this is the energy from the source. While this one, this is the energy on the load. Okay? So we can let this be equal to you. Okay? This is U from A to B, which means that this is the energy of the electrons that travel from B to A that results an energy from high to the low potential, U from A to B. So this is equivalent to the voltage times I times time. If you divide this both sides by time, okay, dividing both sides by time, this will be cancelled out, and the left member becomes U or the energy per time now take note this is the definition of power energy per unit of time so therefore this should be 
electric power U or the energy, electric potential energy per unit of time is the electric power. So we can replace the, this with P. So therefore, in order to calculate how much how much current consumed on the load, then we can say that how identify the voltage here, then times I. Okay, if you have to multiply the voltage times I, then the answer is power. Now, if you are asked how much is the delivered delivered power from the source, it should be the product of the voltage from A to B multiplied by the current that passes through this uh, element. Okay, or this is a source element. So, therefore, it is simply as the product of V times I. Okay, now take note that in this formula, if you have the voltage and you have the current on that point, you can always calculate the power. Take note the unit. Uh, okay, uh, this power ca was calculated because of the voltage and I. Now, what if there is no voltage? Instead, we have the R. Okay, so what? therefore, how can you calculate the power involving R? So, in that case, we will replace the V. Take note, V ohm's law is I times R. So, therefore, we can replace this V with IR from ohm's law. That results what? This is I and I. So, this, is, this will be I squared. So, another way to calculate the power is squaring the current that passes through that element multiplied by its resistance. So, for example, I want to know how much is the current consumed on the load. Now, all you need to do is to know this current and know this resistance value. So, square this current, multiply it by R, the answer is the power. And this is the power, this is the power dissipated by the uh, load consumed. Okay? It was uh, the amount of energy consumed per unit of time is power. So, therefore, okay. Now, another way is to involve the to involve with uh, B and R. So, in that case, we will replace this with what? We can replace I with from ohm's law, remember, uh, voltage is IR. So, therefore, if you want to calculate I, it should be V over R. So, therefore, I can replace I from this equation with V over R. So, to do it, we have this V, okay? Then multiplied by I, but I is V over R from ohm's law. So, therefore, another way to calculate the power is square the voltage, divide it by the resistance value. These are the three formulas in calculating power. So, within the circuit, okay, all you need to do, if you are asked how much is the power consumed in the load, so therefore, you need the I and you need R, then use this formula. If you are asked how much is the net uh, power delivered by the source, you have to use this formula. If, if B is available, then multiply this B with I. So therefore, you are using this formula. So therefore, you can calculate the power depending on the given, depending on the given of the at any point. This involves voltage, current, and R with the presence of the power. Okay, so therefore, we are now ready to calculate how much power. But the question is, what's the unit? If the unit of voltage is, our unit of potential difference is volts, and the unit of current is, is I, how much is the power? Okay, so take note that the unit should be in watts. Because remember, in our previous topic in mechanical power, the unit should be watts. Why? Take, take note that the rate of energy of the moving charge, when we say rate, it should be the amount of charge or the energy of the charge per time is power. So, the question is, what is the unit? What is the unit of the power? Then, the answer is uh, what? Now, take note that this is joules, okay? 
the, the unit of energy is joule and this one is time so this is joule per second so one joule per second is take note in our previous topic it is one watt or one big w so therefore this is the unit the unit in this i for the power is what big letter w okay now i have here the chart so this chart will able to provide you the different formulas that you can use now how to use this chart this is taken from the online uh picture so uh suppose you are asked to calculate the voltage okay let's start with the voltage volts the unit is volts now ohm's law it is i times r so use this one if you have the i you have the r you can calculate the volts now you can also calculate the voltage if you have the power and you have the i take note of the formula previously we say that the power is the product of v times i so therefore v is p over i so with the power and your current divide it the result is volts another way is to use the uh, power and resistance so multiply that to then take square root okay take note that we have different we provided three different formulas for the power first we have the power is bi then second we have the power is i squared times r and the last formula we provided is power is equal to v uh, square over r so therefore in order to solve for v you have to take square root of the product of power times r okay now let us say i want to solve current how to solve current these are the three formulas current can be solved using involved uh, voltage and resistance so take note is taken from ohm's law formula so if if current is if b is i is the product of i times r then i should be b over r okay we can also solve for the current for having power and voltage state divide it then the result is i also take the square root of p square p over r okay then for the power these are the three formulas we provided in our previous slide b times i i squared times r b squared over r if you are uh, want to solve for r Again, there are three formulas. Using Ohm's law, V over I, or you, in terms of power, it's just, there are two uh, relationships for the power. We have the V squared over P or P over I squared. So, this is actually a useful chart. So, take note, this this is in four, four quadrants in the Cartesian. The first quadrant, we have V. The second, we have I. We have the fourth, uh, P in the third, and we have the R for the fourth quadrant okay so remember that we no need to memorize okay all you need to do is to use the ohm's law principle be sure to know the ohm's law and be sure to know the definition of power our power starts with v times i then we expand that uh, relations using the ohm's law and we provided these three formulas for the power so no need to memorize okay let's apply this problem let us let us apply this problem now the problem says that the power rating of the light bulb such as 100 watts so this is very familiar bulb in our household okay so if you have the bulb which is 100 watts okay is this uh is the power it is dissipated when connected across the 120 volts so the source voltage is 120 volts unlike in our actual we have 220 so this is most likely in uh, one uh, in japan we have the source voltage of 120 volts let us say that our source voltage is 120 volts and we use the 100 watt bulb question what is the resistance of that bulb take note the 100 watts is power because of the unit so therefore if we have 20 watts we have 50 watts we have 10 watts it is talking about the power rating of that bulb so the power rating of the bulb is 100 watt and this 100 watt was used okay uh to light up using the 120 volts potential difference what is the resistance 
Okay? Letter A, using that 100. And letter B, what will be the resistance if we use, instead of 100, we use 60? Okay? Then the last question is how much current? Solve for the current for each of the bulb. There are two bulbs. We have the 100 and we have the 60. Okay? To start is, <clears throat> take note, you are asked how much the resistance. But take note also that this involves power. So therefore, we have to connect the formulas with the power and the Ohm's law. The combination of the two principles will be applied to this problem. Okay, so letter A. The question is how much is the resistance? So for P having 100 watts, okay, given, and the power of the, vol of the voltage is 120 volts. You are asked to solve for how much is the resistor. So to answer this is to recall the three formulas that involve power. These are the three formulas. Power is V times I, or power is I squared times R, or power is V squared over R. So choose which of the three can be applied to solve to solve R. So very obvious that we, we need this one. We have to square the V and divide it by R. The answer is P. Okay? So substitute the values. We can substitute it here. So P for 100 watts, V for 120 volts square, R is unknown. So therefore, take the diagonal, diagonal product of this or uh, solve for R, then the answer is 144 ohms. Okay, so we are, we provided the answer for letter A. Now, letter B is, the difference is, instead of having 100, what will be the re resistance if we use the 60 watt bulb? Okay, 60 watt bulb. So, for a 60 watt bulb with the same voltage of 120, what will be the resistance? So, surely, this is not equal to 144 because our watt it, wa power rating is only 60. So, what will be the equivalent resistance of that bulb? So then, use the same formula because we have this power, we have this voltage, then solve again the R, then the answer is 240 ohms. These are the answers for A and B. Now look at letter C. Letter C is different question because you are asked how much current. So therefore, you need to solve for I. You need to solve for I. We have these two formulas that involves I. Okay? So take note that how much current does each bulb draw in the normal use so therefore each bulb so we need to know how much current that passes through the 100 watt bulb and how much current passes through the 60 watt bulb okay so letter c we have the voltage available 120 okay the same source of voltage and you are asked to solve for i now look at the formula look at the formula that involves there are two formulas and we have this voltage so therefore, take note that we have the power rating. So therefore, we can use this formula. P is equal to V times I. So for the bulb of 100 watt power, so then we will substitute this 100 watt here. Then we have the voltage of 120. Then we can solve for I. So therefore, use this formula, then solve for I. With that, substitute the power with 100, substitute the voltage with 120 volts, then calculate and we have the answer 0.833 ampere take note these are on SI because the SI unit of power is what and the SI unit of volts is a voltage is V so therefore automatically this should be ampere or if you evaluate this one this will come up with joules per joules per seconds and the joules per seconds is the 1 ampere. So therefore, the answer is 0.833 amperes. Okay. Not yet. Finish because each of the bulbs. So we need to solve how much I that passes through the 60 watts. So therefore, use the same formula. Okay. For 60 watts, use the same formula. Transform this one. It should be P over V. Then substitute P with 60 watts and divide it by 120 volts. Calculate. Then we have 0.5 ampere. So, therefore, these are the current that passes through the 100 bulb, 100 watt bulb, and the 60 watt bulb. 
Now, you can say that the greater d wattage, the greater d, or the greater power rating, the greater the current that flows into that bulb. Because this is 0.833 and this is 0.5 ampere only for the 60 bulb. So, these are the answers to problem number one. Okay, let's continue discussing about uh, the circuits with, with power. So, take note that so far, we now understand that there are three formulas to calculate the power. It depends upon the given. If given the voltage, given the I, then we can use the, we can calculate the power. If we have the I and we have the R, again, we can solve for the power. If we have the V and we have the R, then we can solve for the power again. Now, the question now is, what will be the, the, uh, energy okay the energy uh or the power delivered or produce that uh, or converts the battery into take note the battery the battery itself produce chemical energy and that chemical energy was converted into electrical energy that's why this is the source of this uh, energy by the load. So, the question now is how much converted power from chemical energy to electric energy? So, how much power? So, what will be your answer? Okay. Now, another is, you might be asked what will be, take note, this is resistance. This is internal resistance. Small letter R. So, how much, <clears throat> because this is resistance, so it consumes energy. Where, where, where the internal energy get an energy or 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 power the answer is it's taken from the the e, emf or the converted energy from the chemical to electrical so therefore the question now is how much power dissipated by the internal resistance okay how much power dissipated by the internal resistance okay that will be another question oh then another possible question is how much power dissipated by the load or the external uh, loads because we have the internal and we have the external so how much the is the power consumed by individual external loads so this might be uh, two three or more load so how much is specific load on that point okay another question is if if we have this as the energy converted and this form of power and this will be deducted because it was dissipated by the internal resistance how much is the net power delivered to the circuits so that will be the questions okay so to answer is look at this one again we have to recall these three formulas these are very important formulas this is where we can provide always the answer. If we involve power, then do not forget these formulas. It starts with this V times I. Then it expands using the Ohm's law. No need to memorize. This one, you have to familiarize that V, I is power. With that, you can, you can expand the other three. Okay. So, now, let us recall also in our previous video, in video number three. In video number three, talking about what? Talking about uh resistor okay talking about resistor now take note that we understand or simple circuit sorry for a simple circuit we understand that there are two formulas of finding this, this is a simple circuit so there are two formulas of finding the potential difference from a to b from high to low take note of that so in our previous video, number 3, we understand that the potential difference from A to B is equivalent to the EMF. Take note, EMF is the energy, or this is the voltage uh, voltage of the non-electrostatic elements. Non-electrostatic elements. And this is the voltage of the internal resistance. So, if you subtract the EMF, by the internal resistance voltage, which is in the form of IR, the answer is the potential difference. Then we can say that 
the potential difference is always less than compared to the EMF reading. Okay? So, therefore, uh, you have to subtract the EMF by the external dissipated or the uh, voltage of the external or the internal resistance. Okay? So, if, if, if we ignore, if the battery has a negligible a negligible internal resistance, then we can say that the EMF is equivalent to the potential difference. Okay? So, now, using this relationship, this is true because this is, what? This is from A to B. So, this is always true because we have only one internal resistance here. Now, if we multiply this both sides by I, let's say I, 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 will, I will multiply this I to this equation, what will happen? Okay? So, if you multiply I, this will become B times I, and this will become what? The AMA times I, and this is I square, I square times R. Okay? So, multiply both sides by I, this will become BI, and this is e a a m f times i uh, minus i squared r okay using another you know, there are as i said there are two formulas to solve for the potential difference now we can solve the potential difference in the opposite side so looking at a to b you, we can use this one this two or maybe we can use this load and in this case simple circuit we have only one load it is simply as the product of i times r okay now, again, multiply both sides by I. What will happen? This will become V times I, and this is I squared R. Okay. Take note. Look at this one. Let us analyze what are these answer after multiplying I to the two formulas of the potential difference. Okay. Let's uh, analyze it individually. Now, what is the product of the potential difference from A to B multiplied by I? So, if you multi, take look, look at the triple minus the power. This is power, actually. These are all power. But what is V from A to B times I? So, this is now voltage times I is power. So, <clears throat> what will be the result? Or what is the name of that power? If you are multiplying the potential difference from A to B to I. The answer is, this is the power delivered from the source. Or we call this as a net output so this is now ready to serve which means that if you have a water tank okay take note water tank there are sometimes leakage of the tank then if you want to deliver it to the, to the consumer water consumer then the content of the tank subtracted by the loss of water and the answer is the uh, net water ready to deliver so in this case if you multiply the voltage from a to b by the current we call this as the power delivered from the source or in simply this is the net output okay so we understand now uh, the meaning of the potential difference from a to b times i now what is emf times i look at the circuit if you multiply by the way we multiply the EMF with the current that passes through this point. Take note, the current is the same all throughout. Whatever current uh, passes from A to B. Now, take note here, the current is from A to B also. So, therefore, what will be the current that passes through? Oh, what will be the power? So the result, if we multiply the EMF by the power over the current, this is the EMF times the current. Okay? The answer is, this is the power conversion in the battery. So, the, what is the meaning of power conversion? Take note that in the battery, we use chemical reactions. And the chemical reactions provide chemical energy. And that chemical energy can be converted into what? Into con converted into electrical energy. So, with time, we call that as the power conversion in the battery. Okay? So, that's it. Then, what is I square? Take note, this is subtracted by I square times R. So, therefore, look at this one. Circuit. In the battery, we have the internal resistance. So, if you multiply the square of I that passes through this resistor with the internal resistance, 
The answer is what? This is the power dissipated by the battery. Which means that the battery itself dissipate uh, energy. And there is a loss of energy and it was converted into heat. Okay? So, we have this as the power dissipated by the battery itself. So, it happens only when there, we, there, there is current passes through this element. If, if no current passes through, then <coughs> there is no power dissipation on that point. Okay. We understand the three elements. Okay. Look at this one. What is again B I times I? This is the same. Power delivered from the source. The same. Okay. The same. There, which means that there are two ways. There are two ways to calculate the what? The power delivered from the source. First is the difference from the power conversion by the power dissipated of the internal resistance or the power dissipated by the battery. Or we can use the I square times R. What is I square times big letter R? Take note, big letter R is the load. Which means that if you square this I, look at this one, this I, if you square this I multiplied by R, what? is the meaning of that the answer is this is the power dissipated by external load this is now the energy loss during the conversion from electric energy converted to light energy take note in the source from chemical energy converted to electrical energy that will be the power conversion in the battery but the electrical energy now was converted again into light energy and we call that as the power dissipated by, by, the, by the external load. So therefore, again, there are two ways. You can subtract the power conversion in the battery by the power dissipated by the battery. Or you can use the power dissipated by external load. They are the same. There are two ways. Okay, now we already understand everything about simple circuit on how to compute the voltage and how to compute current and how to compute the resistance and how to compute the power now take note if there if for every circuit there must be power when you close the circuit why because of the movement of the electrons that results current remember always that the current flows from high potential to a low potential do not confuse with the movement of electrons take, by the way the electricity, the words electricity means the motion of electrons. But take note that regardless of what kind, what particle is traveling, you can, we can say that electrons, protons, or 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 electrons moves, or the protons will move. No, no, no need to understand which of the two. The most important for every uh, movement of electrons, there must be current. And regardless of what sign, whether positive charge or negative charge. The current will flow in the direction of the electric field from high towards the low potential. So, from A to B, the current should be in this case. But from A to B here, this one, the current is moving from A to B. But take note of the, because of the chemical conversion, the electrons or protons will be pushed towards the high potential. So that it maintains the ability to deliver the current. Okay. So, now, in order to <clears throat> apply the idea on the different power in the circuits, let us have this problem number two. Problem says that we have the 24 volts battery with internal resistance of 2. Okay? And it's used to supply the load with a resistance value of 4. 4 ohms. Calculate the following. Okay? Letter A, power con conversion of the battery, C, P, Epsilon. And letter B, calculate also the power dissipated by the battery. And we call this as P, R. So take note, we, R means the internal resistance. And letter C, the power dissipated by the external load, C, P, sub R, big letter R. And finally, the power delivered by the source because it's as p source now take note this circuit again is very familiar because we used this in our previous video in video number three using a simple circuit now if you remember 
uh, we calculated the the current that flows into the circuit and the amount of voltage and we come up with the current is equal to I or for I per ampere and the potential difference is 16 volts these are the results in our uh, video number three but this time we use the same circuit but we calculate now the power how much is the power delivered on this circuit there are different power okay Le number one okay take note that you are asked to calculate the power conversion of the battery take note the word conversion means from from the chemical energy going to electrical and ready to serve we call that as the uh power conversion of the battery so the subscript is how the, the symbol is p sub epsilon so take note that if you multiply the emf by i this is in the previous video a, a slide the emf times i we call that as the power uh conversion of the battery so substitute because our our aim is 24 and our i is 4 so do it multiply and the answer is 96 watts okay we answered letter a letter b the power dissipated by the battery power dissipated by battery now take note within the battery we have the internal resistance so we use the p sub r small letter r now take note that because this is r and the formula we we need to use is the i squared times r so take note the same i within the circuit so use the same i but square it times the times the internal resistance and our internal resistance is 2 ohms and our i is 4 so do it 4 square times 2 then the answer is 32 okay okay 4 times 4 16 times 2 32 this is watts therefore 1 watt is 1 volt ampere or 1 watt is one amp omega okay letter c letter c is the power dissipated by the load so how much is the power consumed on the load in our previous we use the bulb okay or any load as long as it is four ohms so therefore use the formula of i square again times r subscript of big letter r means this is the power consumed or dissipated by the external load okay square r square i times r so this is 4 r 4 a square times 4 ohms and the answer is 64 watts then liter d how much power delivered by the source okay so you can use this one take note there are two ways okay there are two ways the source is equivalent to the power dissipated or convert, converted by the battery subtracted by the dissipated power which is p sub r small letter r and the answer is 96 minus 32 and the answer should be 64 okay now take note there are two okay there are two two ways two ways is to use the i squared times big letter r so take note the i squared times big letter r is the power dissipated by the external load it is 64 so therefore the same take note that the power dissipated by the load is the same as the power delivered by the source or the net power from the source so look at the result they are the same okay so again these are the answer to the problem okay so all you need to do is to solve this problem this is a very interesting problem this is a practice problem take note the power battery powered global positions or gps reserver uh draws voltage of 9 volts and the current is and the current is 13.13 amperes so you are asked to what how much energy does it consume during the 30 minutes so how many answer this one First is to answer the take note given the I and given the voltage. So therefore you can calculate the power. And the power is equal to energy divided by time. So therefore after calculating this time or, or, or power using the voltage and I, multiply it with the 30 minutes. Convert this to hour in order to be consistent. Or seconds, sorry. Convert this to seconds so that it will be consistent with this I. So therefore that's it. Very easy. Then this one, 
uh, with the resistor when the resistor with resistance R is connected to 1.5 volt plus light battery, the resistor consumes so therefore okay, these are the, the we have the conditions that if we use this R, we don't know what is how much is R to 1.5 volts, the power consume was 1.0625 uh, watts. Okay. The question now, letter A. What power does the resistor consume if we connect instead of 1.5, we use the 12.6? The car battery. Assuming the same resistance. The same resistance. Okay. What power? Okay. So, okay, that's all for today. Thank you. See you in my next video.